Hello, Dave and Tim here for a single malt review. It's been a while since we sampled some rum, so we're going to sally forth into Central America, metaphorically speaking, down to Nicaragua, for some flor de caña. Mmm, I think our first rum that we've had from Nicaragua, mm. uh, which is, well, is less and less surprising. The more rums we taste, the more I realise that rum kind of comes from almost everywhere, yeah. as long as it's more or less on the equator. Um, be it Mexico or Nicaragua or Venezuela or almost anywhere. Or New Zealand um, that one time. Or New Zealand, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're, not even, not we're not even on the equator. <laughs> but um, yeah, anywhere sugar is grown or anywhere even adjacent to it springs forth the rum, which I suppose is yeah. good. It's if probably of anything, it's the most international spirit mm. that you can get. Maybe even more international than vodka. Yeah. Um, so there you go. It's something to something to think about. It really is a um, a spirit of the world. Mm. So this is our first Nicaraguan rum. It's also mm -hmm. obviously our first Flor de Caña rum. But we're diving right into their sort of super premium range. Yes. But funny enough, that's sort of the only one that was on the shelf. Mm. Um, I don't know what the um, awful slag that is there. Merely, you know, super premium or God forbid regular premium but um this is this is the one i got did not cost me a lot of money so yeah. ultra premium though it may be um it's uh the price is the price mm. is pretty mild so it's the youngest of the offerings in that particular range uh, yes it 12 is years. Uh, but 12 years still um well 12 years in parentheses because 12 years aged in a time-honored tradition, which I think is a kind of a long-winded way of saying Solera aged, which mm. is kind of par for the course for rums, uh, most rums anyway, but it's still not a great thing to see mm. because it means 12 years old, but only a bit kind of a thing, and 12 years old on average. It doesn't mean, it's sort of the no-age statement version of rum, mm. I guess. I mean, that's not the that's not the best sort of association to make because it isn't by any means exactly the same, but it means 12 years in a kind of a wishy-washy way. It doesn't mean it went into casks, waited 12 years, came out the other side. Um, yeah, it's you can look up Solera systems if you like. I won't attempt to explain them here. They can be quite complicated. Um, but they, they do not make for the most... Mm, they don't make for a one-to-one -one aging. Right. So they're, they're a really easy way of putting a big high number on your bottle without actually doing the work, mm. I suppose, is the one way of describing it. But anyway, yes. we will rate this for what it is. Moderately sweet, 12-year-old Central American rum. Mm -hmm. hmm. And it's, it it's not a bad one. Yeah. Um, for as I can... I'm, well, I'm this much of the expert, having had quite a lot mm. of this bottle, I've been kind of being a bit lax on getting this one out for review, so I thought I'd rescue it out from the cupboard before it mm. um, diminished entirely, but it is in no way a particularly bad rum at all. It's, yeah. it's a very sugar caney rum. It's mm. quite fresh and fruity and caney. It's not a 12 years maybe, and this particular colour may be, I suspect, very, 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 very likely um, chill-filtered and coloured, in addition to 40%, so it's kind of your minimum, minimum for a, a rum that we'd want to review. I kind of have a policy of not wanting to touch mm. things that are under 40%, which you can legally do in rum. You can shove your 38% proof, or, well, ABV, I don't know what that works out into a proof, you'd need a calculator, but... Um, there's a lot of rums that are just not worth the bother, hmm. really. Um, so I want to see at least a 40% on the label. So this one meets the standards there. Hmm. Well, sweet, but not overly sweet. Yeah. It's, uh, not, there's not a dry edge sweet. to it, which um, I like. I tried hmm. to do my diligence looking this up on the various databases which describe whether sugar is added in what hmm. quantity to rums. Um, a lot of those databases seem to be broken, at least oh. today, or whether they have, have expired or been run out of town or litigated against or who knows, but the I was not able to find it out. So I think there is fairly confident to say that there is a marginal amount of sugar added to this, but not a great deal. I don't think it dramatically interferes with the character of the rum like it does with a great many other brands. So... I think what we're smelling in here is largely some pretty good herbal notes, quite a good fresh fruitiness. Mm. Not a lot of oak, not a lot of oak at all beyond a bit of sort of baseline vanilla mm. and stuff like that, and lots of kind of good fresh green sugarcane notes. So sugar cane, a bit of good notes. maple syrup too. Just a hint of maple mm. almost. Mm. So on the palate. Mm. That is quite hot for the low strength. 
Um, and the uh, actual added sweetness. It's pretty mm. punchy. It's got a prickle, prickle to it, yeah. Pretty punchy at 40% and mm. very warming as well. Mm. It's quite a, it's quite hot going down and I'm yeah. not sure exactly what that, what produces that or not because there's some things, you know, over 40% which certainly don't produce that warming effect on their way down the throat, mm. but this one certainly has it. Quite a tangy element to a flavour. There's obviously all that rum sweetness and there's mm. some vanilla, there is some sugar cane, some molasses, but... It's quite good. Yeah. It has a good acid mm. to it. It's got a good, it's very mouth-watering, quite a good liquid flowing, which yeah. is a, maybe a slightly oblique way of describing something that is, in fact, a liquid. But you get palates which are, ones move faster than others, I suppose I could say. Some are quite sort of cloying and stuffy mm. and stick to areas of the tongue, and you, you know, you, you'll be tasting one thing that dominates the rest what I call a liquid or a flowing palate it just sort of flows over the tongue and it moves nice and fast and it changes from all its various um, flavour profiles it goes from one to the next quite quickly and this is in that category it's pretty light bodied mm. for a rum more light bodied than most 12 year olds mm. they're normally getting a bit sort of heavier slightly soupier certainly um, my sort of what I always call the standard 12 year old rum mm. for me is Appleton Estate, that's sort of the rum that I judge other 12 year olds against. Yeah, that one has really, gotten... It sets a high standard. Yeah, that one, that one is conspicuously oaked, although yeah. Appleton shares the one distinction of aging its rums properly, so that's mm. probably on average quite a bit older than the 12 year old that's in here from the Solera system, so maybe not particularly mm. applicable. Um, good and light body, lots of herbaceous mm. cane character, almost a little bit of Rums, when they're nice and kind of green and herbal like that, they almost begin to push into the very, very edge of tequila territory. Oh. You get that sort of... Because tequila is all herbaceous green mm. flavours, or at least um, most, most tequila is until you get into the very, very old... Well, for, by tequila standards anyway, the very, very oak-influenced Añejo tequilas, which we have not reviewed mm. here. But rums, I find... As they are, if they're very light-bodied and quite green and herbal, they can just just begin to trip on the edge of that profile. Mm. And this one is doing that for me. There's the uh, finish here, though, is quite uh, heavy and sweet. That's mm. where all that um, sugary just starts to come through. Is right at the end. Once you're swallowed, it's starting to disappear from the palate, but then just a hit of sticky sugars. Mm. Though all that said, I really do quite like it. This is. I haven't tried many 12-year-olds or 12-year-olds rums. Um, and this one, for a lighter-bodied rum, I think it is one of the better mm. ones that we have reviewed. It sort of doesn't, it doesn't cloy, it doesn't stick. The sugar added, though the, I think there is a little bit in there, is much, much lighter treatment than um, some of the other ones we've seen. Like the, um, oh, the name escapes me now. Shouldn't have even mentioned it. Um, of the other ones, the older rums were, mm. that we've had, um, I think uh, Ron Methuselah, there it is, there it's coming back to me, Ron Methuselah, that was 21 year old, that had a much, much more conspicuous addition of sugar there. There was a real molasses mm. character to that one, which this one, this one avoids. Much lighter, bouncier, more vibrant rum here. Mm. And I think that does it quite a lot of favours. Um, scores for this one, we haven't done a lot of rums, so we um, we haven't really zoned in on the absolute sort of typical average for rums yet. They're all sort of a bit all over the place. Not that they don't mean anything, they're just um, less to compare them with as opposed to uh, bourbons or scotch whiskies. But this one, this one I think is pretty good for a lighter bodied rum, for a age statement rum as far as you can trust it I think it's one that really carries quite a lot of fairly fairly good individual character and it's an 84 for hmm. me what do you think I'm honestly not so fond of this it's got that heavy cloying sweetness which I like in some hmm. rums it's got a little of a drier character of a less sweetened much older rum but the two kind of just are at odds with each other and for me it's a 69. Mm. It's enjoyable enough, but it's not an experience in and of itself, and not what I speak for something that's a 12-year-old uh, offering as well. This is, um, to go a bit technical with rums, mm. this is a bit of a, it has the flavour of a 
to use the French word, which I think is most of them do, it's a rum agricole, hmm. which is a rum produced from fresh sugarcane. There's rum agricole and rum industrialique, I think. Hmm. And one uses um, sugar byproduct, so molasses. Yeah. And that you get a very, very heavy, syrupy rum out of that. Most dark rums are made that way. Mm. And rum agricole, those are usually plantation rums, which this is. This is made on the Flor de Cana plantation, so with all their own sugar. Um, it has a lot more notes of that made with fresh sugarcane juice mm. than you would otherwise expect. And you get a much more sort of herbaceous, mm. lighter bodied rum when you make them that way. There are just a few brands left alive, not many, that call themselves agricole or industrial ah, respectively. Right. Um, I think one can be found here in New Definitely Zealand. Definitely seen agricole right. on a few labels, yeah. but never um, industrial We should do a comparison one day to yeah. really get to the bottom of it, because there is quite a lot of sort of purely taxonomic differences between the two, and it helps to know which one you're um, looking at, and even more importantly, which one you prefer, mm. because I think as, the, as our scores for this one have shown, it will take different people differently uh, depending on what you're um, what you're there in for but at any rate I hope that was of some use that was Florida 12 not necessarily 12 years old but Florida 12 um, there may or may not be a difference but this has been the single malt review and there is never a difference here we're always the most top quality um, and we stand by that Slanger, we'll be right back with just one more rum, and I think that will just about do us for our weekend session here before we completely lose the ability to function. But do not worry, I have saved potentially the least relevant for last, so nothing of any value will be lost. See you then. Hello, Dave here with Tim Forvey. Sorry, <laughs> so like your accessory. God. Ah, oh, God. Oh, righty, one more time. Hello, Dave and Tim here with the Single Mold Review, and today we venture into Central... Fuck, does it even Central America? I feel like I should know. Shit. Probably. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, I've got the... I can look yeah. it up. And yeah, it's a, it, yeah, I feel like it matters. Um, basic geography and shit. I'm sure it's Central America, but I've been wrong about things I've been sure about before. Man, you're wrong on the internet, and everyone has to let you know. Central America. Jolly good. Okay.